Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Iacoboni at Kyle Center Cancer Care Center here in Scottsdale. It's great to be here today. I'm here to answer some commonly asked questions that are sort of myths about breast cancer, uh, as this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. One of the common misconceptions about breast cancer is that there's some risk for using antiperspirants, especially roll-ons, and I think the rationale is that it clogs uh, the glands that uh, allow the breast to drain. Actually, the only thing an antiperspirant can clog is, a, is a, a sweat gland, and that's really not part of the breast uh, at all, and uh, there's no risk whatsoever to use of antiperspirants. There are some women who, uh, uh, for various reasons, may decide to wear their bra at night. Uh, and um, I can think of several reasons why. We don't have to go into that now. But the point is, uh, if you want to wear your bra um, at night, you can. I think that for any piece of clothing, whether it's a sock or a tie or a watch, uh, anything that's slightly occlusive, you don't want to leave it on your body 24 hours a day. It should come off at least for an hour when you shower or change clothes or, or this or that. Um, if you wear a bra all day and you want to wear your bra at night, you should take it off for a couple of hours be between dinner and bedtime just to let uh, the tissues relax so that there isn't any um, a significant congestion or any other problem. But I know of no reason to worry about this. I think it's important to understand uh, the risk factors of breast cancer. First of all, uh, if you're a woman, you're at risk for breast cancer, period. Now, uh, the number one risk for breast cancer is if a first degree relative, meaning your mother or your sister, has breast cancer, then you are at much higher risk, twice as high the risk, as someone who doesn't have that history. But they then have a risk of 20%. You have a risk of five to 10%, so you still have risk. And the risk uh, accrues every single year. So uh, hopefully, praise God, uh, you your mother and your sister don't have breast cancer, but even if that's, they don't, um, you are still a woman with breast cells and they can become cancerous and you need to um, uh, be aware of that. Sometimes I've asked about uh, ethnicity in breast cancer. Uh, actually, the only known uh, ethnicity risk for breast cancer are uh, Eastern European Jews otherwise referred to as Ashkenazi, uh, deriving from uh, Ukraine, Poland, and Eastern uh, Russia. Um, and they typically carry the uh, marker that is commonly known as uh, BRCA or BRCA. Uh, African-American women do not have uh, a higher uh, risk of getting breast cancer than non-African-American women. But they still have risk and they need to be screened. There's a, a lot of uh, discussion and debate about when uh, breast cancer screening should start. Um, now, you, you need to know something about screening, meaning that uh, screening only is a good thing to do when uh, what you're screening for is common. And so screening for rare things doesn't pay off. Uh, and so the younger you are as a woman, the less beneficial it is to start screening. What I tell patients is that if you have risks, like family history, or you don't have any children, uh, or you're not physically active, and so on, or you have lumps, then you should start your screening at age 40. Uh, in Canada and other managed care uh, Western nations, they don't start the screening till age 50. Um, and yet, uh, in America, we start at 40. Now, screening is more difficult between the age of 40 and 50 because mammograms are actually less uh, reliable during that age group. Still, I think every woman uh, should see their uh, doctor and have a thorough exam, discuss risks, and I think in general it's a good idea to have your first mammogram somewhere around age 40 and uh, not wait. Uh, typically, if the mammogram at that time is completely benign, it doesn't have to be repeated every year. Once you turn 50, you really should have a mammogram done every year.